Well, amen. Thank you so much, uh, Bobby and Phil, for blessing us this morning. He keeps me singing. Well, turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Matthew chapter 10, the 10th chapter of Matthew, as we uh, continue in our journey through the footsteps of Jesus. And um, by the way, as you're turning there to Matthew chapter 10, uh, don't forget next week we want to encourage you greatly to make plans to be with us as we will be celebrating next Sunday morning. Believe it or not, it's one of those rare times where the 4th of July falls on a Sunday. So we will be celebrating our nation's birthday uh, next Sunday morning in worship. It's going to be a great time. There'll be some very special uh, music uh, as part of the celebration here, the message and everything as we celebrate America. And I hope that you will make plans to be a part of that service at 10 o'clock next Sunday morning. It'll be a great time together, and I hope that you will invite friends and family uh, to come and be a part of that as well, and uh, make sure that that's on your schedule And as we dive into God's Word uh, again uh, next week. If you were with us two weeks ago, you'll recall that we started in Matthew chapter 10, particularly uh, as I described it to you, uh, that Jesus was giving instructions to the 12. And he was extremely specific. In fact, I told you that you could look at this 10th chapter as almost like an orientation session that Jesus is giving his disciples who have joined a new company, if you will, or a, a new corporation where they are now receiving the basic training before they are going to be a part of this enterprise that he is starting here on this earth. Heretofore, he has been focused on the masses. He's been there around Capernaum, healing the masses, dealing with the masses, casting out demons and uh, healing lepers and even raising people from the dead. And now he finds himself turning his attention to the 12 here in the 10th chapter. And again, it's almost like an orientation session. And we notice that what he taught in some instances applied only to the 12 and yet in principle it applied to witnesses in every generation and in a similar way some of the instruction applied only to the very brief mission in which he sent them out two by two while their underlying ministry principles applied to their work even after Jesus had ascended to the right hand of the Father, and they would continue to apply as all of his faithful servants uh, in the days to come throughout the church age, even until that day that we know will be called the Great Tribulation. And, and many Bible scholars see the words that Jesus gives to the 12 here actually speak to what is faced by the future disciples, which are you and me. So I want you to picture this morning as we get ready to pick up here in chapter 10 in our reading that the apostles are reassembled after the break. They've got their notebooks in hand and they're ready to listen to everything that Jesus is about to say. Stand, if you will, in honor of the reading of the Word of God. And we pick up in verse 15, if you will, where he says, Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. That's where we left off. He said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore... Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You'll be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. 
Now brother will deliver up brother to death and a father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death and you will be hated by all for my name's sake but he who endures to the end will be saved when they persecute you in this city flee to another for assuredly i say to you you will not have gone through the cities of israel before the son of man comes would you pray with me father i just ask this morning that as you speak to our hearts that these very powerful and sobering words that the disciples would hear from Jesus here in the 10th chapter of Matthew continue to ring in our ears today. And probably every single one of us in this room as we read these words, there are certain images that come into our minds of maybe even things in our current day. And Father, I just ask that this morning that you speak to our hearts. Let your Holy Spirit bring application to us as we gather here this morning around your word. Father, I pray that you would draw those who are not walking close to you today, that you would draw them close. And that, Father, no one would leave here, no one would leave the live stream without dealing with you today because i father fully believe that not a single person is gathered here by accident but father by divine appointment you have brought us into this moment to hear this message in this hour because you have something that we must understand and god i just pray today personally that you'd let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight for it's in jesus name i pray amen may be seated so they've reassembled they've gotten together and when they're back together and jesus is picking back up with his orientation session and they've calmed down and they're ready to listen the first thing he begins with is really an exhortation if you will And the the exhortation he starts with, you can almost imagine the look on their face when the first thing out of his mouth, when they're seated there, almost just waiting for the first words to come. And he says what he says in verse 16, Behold, I send you out as a sheep in the midst of wolves. That's his exhortation? Wow. You you see, in the first part of his instruction, Jesus was preparing them for service, right? That's the reason he told them about the mission they were going to be on. He told them about the message of the enterprise they were going to be sharing. He told them about the miracles that they were going to be performing. He told them about the money, the way they were to handle the money situation. And he told them about the method that they were going to use. He was preparing them for service. But now it's after the break. And the first words out of his mouth and the exhortation is, listen guys, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. You see, this part's not about preparing them for service as much as he's now preparing them for suffering. And his exhortation is where he starts. You see, he's speaking of an anticipation of danger. Sheep are defenseless before wolves. Amen? I mean, everyone knows sheep are perhaps the most dependent. Sheep are perhaps the most helpless. Sheep are perhaps the most ignorant of all domesticated animals. 
Sheep are often panicked by harmless things as well as those that are really dangerous. But the sheep's greatest enemy is predators, in Palestine anyway. And indeed, it was the wolves in that land. And those in all ages that have ever dared to challenge the world system, ladies and gentlemen, have been bitterly opposed by their foes. And because of the danger, Jesus is saying discernment is greatly needed. And that's the reason he gives them the next part. He exhorts them, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, Therefore, what? Be wise as serpents. That's discernment. But they also needed a certain disposition. So you also need to be as harmless as doves. Discernment and a disposition. Wow, what a way to begin this session. What a way to open it all up. I'm going to send you out to the wolves, but you need to be as wise as a serpent. That needs to be your mindset. That needs to be your wisdom and discernment. But your attitude and your disposition needs to be as harmless as a dove. I don't know about you, But I don't hear much preaching today in 2021 of sharing with sinners that they need to count the cost of salvation and repenting of sin in confessing the lordship of Jesus Christ. We don't hear much preaching about coming to him humbly, devoid of pride, and of self-trust. We don't hear much teaching about hungering and thirsting for righteousness. We don't frequently hear believers being called to take up their cross and follow Christ, moving out into the world as sheep led to a slaughter. No. Most preaching and teaching in 2021, you're far more likely to hear a message about ease, about comfort, about riches, about advancement, and about ambition. That's what it's about, they seem. Listen, I don't care what anybody says. Jesus makes no such offer ever and you can visit the box churches just like you visit the box stores and the mall you can have the lights and you can have the sideshows and you can have all of the pomp and circumstances you want But if you don't have the message of brokenness and repentance and being sent into a world that will be opposed to you and that you will be sent out like sheep among wolves and like lambs to a slaughter, you have not heard the truth of the full gospel of Jesus Christ in a world system that has rejected him. It's important. It's important to understand. His exhortation is really very clear. I don't mean to be a downer this morning, but he promises hardship. He promises suffering. And he promises potentially death. And that's his exhortation. That's what he's giving. And and as one of his 12, being wise as a serpent 
simply meant they could see trouble coming and could be prepared to handle it. And when trouble does come, Jesus said, you've got to be as harmless as a dove. And in other words, what that simply means is that the 12 were able to display the spirit of Christ in the midst of a storm. That's what it meant. To display the spirit of Christ in the midst of a storm. That's the exhortation. And that's what they're given. You and I are living in a quickly changing world. We're living in a world where attacks are coming from here. Attacks are coming from there. Attacks are, and we're going to see more about that in the rest of what Jesus says here. But what I'm telling you is when those attacks come, he tells them up front. As my disciples, you better display the spirit of Christ in the midst of the storm because that's going to make you look and act very, very differently from this world. Are you okay out there? I mean, you look like deer in headlights this morning, quite frankly. <laughs> I, I, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what the Word says. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm, I'm just delivering the message. But this is what he says. But then in verse 17, look, look what happens. Because he begins to lay out what they as his disciples could expect to encounter. He says in verse 17, very clearly, but beware of men. Look, look, Jesus is about to identify the wolves. These, this is what they could expect. He's going to identify the wolves, and he begins by saying, beware of men. Underline that line. Now, now all of us know that in Ephesians chapter 6, it makes it very clear that we wrestle what? Not against flesh and blood, right? I get that makes it very clear that we wrestle ultimately against an enemy that is Satan and his demonic host. They are not flesh and blood. I understand that. But please hear me. We must realize and remain aware that the agents, listen to me, the agents of those supernatural enemies are human beings they are human beings it is through human beings that satan opposes and persecutes the church of jesus christ there are people who are the wolves who malign who oppress who imprison, who torture, and who kill God's people. We understand that, right? This is yes, this is no. We understand that, right? Yes, we, we understand that. And Jesus says, beware of the, these. And by the way, by the way, to be innocent as a dove is not to be naive. Come on now. To be innocent as a dove is not to be naive. So we can't, we can't be naive. When, when well-meaning believers insist on putting the best face on evil, I got news for you. That's not demonstrating love. It's demonstrating foolishness. We see it all the time. To love our enemies and not return evil for evil is one thing. But to deny they are enemies of the truth, well, that's 
quite another thing. Jesus didn't just give this warning to frighten the 12 or even make them suspicious of every human who was not a believer. But Jesus did this, ladies and gentlemen, because these 12 guys needed to be warned not to expect the world to receive the gospel and its messengers with open arms. They're not going to do a parade in your honor. They're not going to wave the welcome flag and say, they're here. No. Satan's world system is dramatically opposed to Christ Jesus, to his people, and to his kingdom. And we've got to have sense enough to know in 2021, it is happening every single day that we live. And by the way, Jesus is about to get really specific in terms of who these enemies are going to be for these disciples. You say, well, what do you mean, preacher? Let's read on in verse 17. It says, beware of men. I ask you to underline that. For they'll deliver you up to the councils and scourge you in their synagogues. Well, wait a minute. In their synagogues? Yep. First, first place they're going to come from, going to come from religion. Going to come from religious circles. That's the first crowd that's going to be the enemy, will be the religious crowd. By the way, Jews had the authority and the power to settle disputes. How? 39 lashes that they could give out. They could order the councils, could sentence a person to receive 39 lashes. That happened, Saul of Tarsus, by the way, before his conversion, did this recorded in Acts 22, 19. Listen, our world, just in recent years, watched in horror as ISIS was a group who beheaded children, beheaded women, and adult men who claimed to be Christians, all in the name of religion. And the world watched on international television. Read on in verse 18. You'll be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. Wait a minute. Verse 18. Whoa. Before governors and kings for my sake. Yep. There's a second. There's a second wolf. Government. They're going to be coming from government. Coming from government against the truth of God's word for God's people. Read on. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. And look at verse 21. Now brother will deliver up brother to death. And a father is child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Verse 21 is probably the most unsettling when he identifies an enemy, a wolf. He says it's going to come from your own family. Family will turn on family. 
father will hand over a child for death. When I read those three things, it caused me to think about something. I want you to stop and think about this. There are three institutions in the beginning of time that God himself has established in this world in which we live. God himself established the first home. God himself established human government. And God himself established the church. And yet in the last days, all three you will find will take a form that will oppose the truth rather than promote the truth. You see, Satan has always been the ultimate counterfeit. And would take the three institutions that Almighty God established and use those very three to oppose the truth in this world. Now, the great news that I really hope you underline is verse 19 and 20 that we just read. Because he tells us when, you, when they deliver you up, in other words, when you get your moment <laughs> in time, when they deliver you up, Do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it'll be given to you in that hour what you should speak, for it's not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks through you. You know what that's called? That's the enlightenment. That's that's the enlightenment that the Spirit of God's going to give you. And that's what Jesus is telling them in the training session. You're going to have an enlightenment in that moment. You don't need to worry today, what in the world will I say when they come for me and I have to stand and give an account? Don't, Don't worry about that. You just focus on Christ. You focus on keeping your eyes on Jesus. You focus on living your life for him. You focus on honoring him, glorifying him. You focus on being as wise as a serpent and innocent as a dove. You keep your eyes sorely in his word. Listen, the more you move in him, you don't have to plan and plot for that day because... The Lord is saying, I'm with you. And when that moment comes, there's going to be the supernatural presence of me that will give you exactly what you need to say in exactly the right time and exactly the right circumstances. And, and you know... <laughs> The wisdom and the words that you're going to be able to express in that moment is going to leave your enemies shell-shocked. They're not going to know what to do with what you say. You say, preacher, I just can't imagine me. I, I, I can't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I promise you it's going to leave them shell-shocked. And we're not going to take the time in the service today, but check it out sometime. Go over and read Acts chapter 7 and see what happened to Stephen. Because when they came against Stephen and they were ready to martyr Stephen, Stephen just began to share. And God gave him every word to say 
And when Stephen finished saying what he had to say, the people went out of their minds. They were covering their ears going, because they just didn't want to hear it. They couldn't stand what they were hearing. They couldn't take it anymore. And they went nuts. And Stephen looked up. And he said, I see Jesus. And Stephen saw the Lord Jesus standing in heaven, applauding right before he would fall asleep and enter into God's presence. You don't have to worry about what you're going to say in those moments. Scripture says, I'm going to give it to you. And Stephen is a perfect example of that. Perfect example of that. But one last thing I want you to see is what he says down here about the endurance. Because as Jesus is, is going through with them in verse 23, look what he said. I mean, he's making it very clear that all men are going to hate the Lord's ambassadors for their witness to his name. But, but then he says... When he says in 22, you'll be hated by all for not my name's sake, but he who endures, verse 22, he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For as surely I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes can, can i just tell you something and i want you to hear me very clearly this morning endurance of persecution is the hallmark of genuine salvation i don't want you to ever forget that Endurance of persecution is the hallmark of genuine salvation. Endurance does not produce salvation, just doesn't. Endurance doesn't protect salvation, it just doesn't. But endurance is evidence of salvation it is proof positive that a person is truly redeemed and a child of god because i'll tell you what i've noticed and we've noticed a little bit of it in just the last 18 months in this country there's something called covid Persecution has always quickly burned away the chaff from the church. If you want to know where the chaff is that's quickly burned away, let there be hard times upon a people and the chaff will be burned away. And the real Real truth will rise up. Show me a person who's only made a superficial profession of Christ, and I'll promise you, I'll show you a person who has no new nature to motivate them to suffer for Christ. They have no divine power to enable them to endure even if they wanted to. I, I listen, I hear people say all the time, I've probably even said it. When, I, when I've looked back at, at, in history at tough times for Christians and tough times that, that folks have gone through, and I thought, you know, if I lived during that period, boy, I, I pray that I would have done the right thing. 
But I can promise you this. I wouldn't have done the right thing if I didn't have the new nature of Christ living in me to empower me to do the right thing. It doesn't come naturally. And you can sit there all day long and say, boy, if I get the opportunity, I'm going to do the right thing. Not unless the power of Christ is alive in you will you do the right thing. That's what Jesus is talking about with his disciples. When he says endurance, endurance to the end. Will be saved. That's the key. I want you to go to James chapter 1, verse 12, and that's where I'm going to leave you today. James chapter 1, verse 12. Go on over to the book of Hebrews and then take a right. Hebrews chapter 1, or James, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 12. And that's a great place to close. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Wow. That crown of life is what each of us is looking for that we are looking for one day when we stand in the presence of the Lord blessed is the man who endures would you bow your heads right where you are please well God bless you thank you so much for being with us at Trinity Baptist this morning as we have gathered for worship and it's my prayer that the Lord has spoken to you in this service today as we have continued walking through the footsteps of Jesus, the study of the Gospel of Matthew. And as you have watched this today, you've noticed as Jesus is teaching his disciples now at that section where he's poured his heart into those specific disciples, the 12 alongside him, he's moved them from really preparing them for service to today we've very specifically seen how he's prepared them for suffering. But you know, it was so encouraging to hear Jesus remind us that even when the wolves are coming, even when the persecution is part of the journey that we're on, that he's going to give us the words to share. He's going to completely protect us with his presence and his power and his spirit. And he's going to guide us uh, every step that we take. And you know, I want you to d just understand today as you walk through your daily life that when challenges come, you're never alone. When those challenges are before you, you have one that you can call upon that is as close as the very mention of his name, and that name is Jesus. And so today, if you've never given your life to Christ, I hope that today would be the day of your salvation. You can do that today just simply by bowing your head, asking the Lord Jesus to come into your heart by repenting of your sin, placing your faith in Jesus and Jesus alone, and surrendering your life to him, asking him to be Lord. He'll come in and he'll change your life forever. We'd love to just share with you more about that and you can reach out to us here at Trinity Baptist. You can email us at office at trinitybaptist.com office at trinitybaptist.com You can reach out anytime and let us know of your interest or your questions that you may have and we'd love to communicate with you. We'd also love to have you visit us here in person right here at 221 Irvin Road in Mooresville, North Carolina and we'd love the opportunity to worship alongside you. But more than anything, what I just want you to remember today is that God loves you. He wants to walk with you through this life and he'll be your very very present help in your time of need. Just trust him and he'll walk with you. May I pray with you today?
Father in heaven, I thank you for every man and every woman who has just joined us in this broadcast today. It's my prayer, Father, that you would just comfort those that need comfort today. Lord, that you have challenged the hearts of those that are maybe drifting from you or maybe even walking a, a great distance from you, that today your spirit has drawn them unto yourself. Lord, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that not a single person has been a part of this service by accident, but by divine appointment, you have guided the individuals listening to me right now to be a part of this and to hear this message. And Lord, I just pray that you would use this time to prepare their hearts, to strengthen them deeply. And Father, just to use them for your honor and your glory. Bless every, every person under the sound of my voice and their families in these days ahead. We thank you that you do remind us we're never alone. And I thank you that you are as close as the mention of your name. Thank you, Jesus. We love you and praise you and lift this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week. In the meantime, if you need us, you can always call us at 704-662-9303. That's 704-662-9303. Or as I mentioned before, you can email us at office at trinitybaptist.com office at trinitybaptist.com. We'd love to hear from you and know how God's using this service and this ministry in your life. Until next time, God bless.